heat engines. Define a heat engine. What do we mean by a heat engine? An example is your car engine. That's a heat engine. State conservation of energy for the heat engine and define its efficiency. So what's a heat engine? Heat engine uses heat, which we call QH, from a hot reservoir. So, so think about that reservoir being um, the hot air inside of the cylinder. And we want to use that hot air to perform work. Well, what, it, what that hot air in the cylinder does is it pushes the piston uh, around and causes the crankshaft to turn, which turns your wheels. So we're taking heat and we're trying to get work out of the deal. And, and in the case of a car engine, it's mechanical work that we need. Some of the heat that is created inside of this engine is rejected to some cold reservoir. So that's out the tailpipe. The, the air coming out of the tailpipe is, is not as hot as the air inside of the cylinders during the internal combustion. Um, but you do lose some heat into this cold reservoir, which is the outside, uh, outside world. So that's a basic idea for uh, a heat engine. Well, what about conservation of energy? So heat is measured in joules. It's a form of energy. That uh, QH goes into the engine. The engine is going to produce work W. And I put absolute value signs because I don't want to worry about the signs, whether they're positive or negative. I just want to say QH with absolute value signs around it is just the heat that I've added to the engine. We get work out and some heat is lost. Well, if you're going to conserve energy, then it darn well better be that the heat um, that you put into the engine is the, the work plus the heat that you get out. And that's the statement here. That's conservation of energy. And the efficiency of the engine the figure of merit for the engine is you want to maximize the amount of work you get done. So that's in the, in the numerator. You're trying to get a lot of work out of this engine, and you'd like to minimize the amount of heat that you have to put in. That minimizes the amount of gas that you burn. So that's how you define the efficiency for um, a heat engine. Work divided by the input heat, heat from the hot reservoir. So here's a, a demonstration. This is a steam engine. It has a boiler that's being heated electrically. There's pressure building up in here. The steam is coming in and driving this piston, which drives the, the flywheel. And then what you see over on this side is a small electrical generator that's taking the rotational motion produced by the steam engine generating a little bit of electricity and lighting this bulb. You can uh, release the pressure of the steam engine either by driving the, the, the engine itself or we have a cool little whistle to go along with it. So. A steam engine requires, you should be able to see there's probably a little bit of water left in the boiler there. It's being heated electrically. Um, in the old days and even, even nowadays, uh, a lot of steam engines are, are powered by coal or by other natural uh, fossil fuels. But this is not only the, the machine of yesteryear. Uh, steam engines are still used in industrial applications. And, um, and basically, the power that's driving this piston mechanism is the pressure from that steam. And um, very powerful, very powerful engine. This is a Stirling engine. It has a big cylinder with a foam um, element, piston, essentially, that moves up and down inside the cylinder. 
It also has a small cylinder. And you may be able to see that this one, the small cylinder, reaches its apex when the middle one is halfway down. So these guys are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. It's an invention back in the 1800s by um, a fellow named Sterling. And the way it works is that if you heat the bottom plate, the air expands, pushes this up, and through a reason reasonably complicated uh, interaction between the air between these two cylinders, it actually powers this motor, and uh, or power powers this engine. And, and, to, and it has a, a complete cycle that it goes through. Once per period, it goes through this cycle. The, the air inside here is exchanged with the air inside the second piston. So these guys are exchanging air, and also there's heat, um, as you'll see, we're going to heat the bottom surface. That'll be hot. The top surface will be cold. And so there's heat flow from the bottom through the top. So the heat starts here. What I've got is um, essentially boiling water. I just finished boiling it a little while ago. Um, and I'm going to set this on top of this boiling water, heat the bottom plate, let it warm up a little bit. The Stirling engine has been considered for use in automobiles and, and other applications. The trouble is it's hard to get started and to, uh, to slow down. But once it gets up ahead of steam, it does pretty well. So from your perspective, the uh, the wheel is rotating clockwise as it's being heated from below. We imagine uh, the heat heating up the air near this bottom plate, causing the, the foam uh, piston to rise, and then exchanging in a complicated manner with the other piston. You can also drive this by cooling from below. So what I'm going to do is to transfer it over to this ice water and see what happens. So now we'll cool the uh, bottom plate so it'll actually be colder than the top plate. Turns out it's a very efficient cycle. This engine is very, very efficient compared to internal combustion and other types of engines. So if one of you scientists or engineers out there can master this uh, for applications, um, then send me a part of your royalty check. What happened is that it slowed down and now, as you can see, it's wrote, it slowed down, stopped, and started rotating in the other direction. What's happening now is we're actually heating it from above. There's no such thing as cooling. There's only heat flow. There's the heat or the absence of heat. So the air in the room is hotter than this uh, ice water. So the heat is, the air in the room is providing the heat that is driving this engine and the heat flow is from top to bottom, which causes the engine to run in reverse. This is a thermoelectric generator. What I'm going to do is to put this leg in this ice water, this leg in this hot water, which uh, a few minutes ago was boiling, and then due to uh, something called the thermoelectric effect, um, there's a semiconductor in here that can basically converts a temperature difference, hot versus cold, in to, to create a current. It takes a little while for the heat to travel up from the hot water through this aluminum plate 
and uh, so that is electricity generated simply from a temperature difference between two plates. So let's do an example. An automobile engine has an efficiency of 22 percent and does 2510 joules of work. How much heat is rejected by the engine? Well the efficiency is the work done divided by the input heat. We can solve that for the uh, input heat by multiplying both sides of this equation by QH and then dividing both sides of this equation by E. So that gives us QH expressed in terms of the work. We know the work is 2510 joules. We know the efficiency is 0.22 aka 22%. We also know that the energy is conserved. The input heat equals the work done plus the output heat. We can solve that for the output heat, the heat rejected to the cold reservoir by, by subtracting the work done from both sides of this equation. That gives this equation here, but QH, we've got an expression for that that we can put in. It's W over E, so W over E minus W, we factor out a W, and we get 1 over E minus 1. So plugging the numbers in, 2510 is the work done, uh, 1 over the efficiency, and remember you have to convert the percentage to a, to a decimal fraction, 22% is 0.22 minus 1. So that's how much energy is... Um, uh, how much output heat is lost to the um, environment.